about it. It is, yeah. You can uh, take a look around. It won't take long to, to look around this place. So yeah, this is where the album was made, everything. Was right. Recorded. Well, not in the kitchen, obviously, but in the room next door. So the album was finished in like March or something like that. And since then, it's just been, there's so much like getting ready and kind of gearing things up. So at the moment, it's all about getting the tour ready. Yeah, you know, we've been rehearsing for the last like, three weeks or something like that, just two and a bit, three weeks or something. And uh, so today is another day of rehearsal. Do you want to take us through some of the influences? Have you got some uh, yeah, sure. here we could go through? Yeah, come on in. So this is where it all happens? Yeah, this is where it all happens and it's stuff piled up everywhere at the moment. So here's a Wire record it's from 1978. Making this record I kind of went through loads and loads of music and kind of wasn't really honing in on people's albums or whatever, it was each honing in on individual songs and how they were written and how they like had some immediate effect on me or whatever. So there's a like perfect, it's like an incredibly perfect condensed pop song called Outdoor Minor. So, anyway, that was cool. One minute and 45 seconds of perfectly put together pop song. So you have a Sun Ra section here. I do have quite a large Sun Ra section. I can't really go past the Sun Ra record without buying it, I'm afraid. This is a band called Lothar and the Hand People, and they are from the, I guess it's from 1970 or something like that. They were like a kind of 60s or 70s, early 70s kind of stoner West Coast psych band or whatever. So this this song I guess is a is a one that I listen to a lot. It's just a a really simple kind of simple like love song kind of lullaby. But where most of the instruments you'd expect them to be kind of guitars and things, they kind of chose to use a lot of drum machines and use a lot of weird old synths to kind of surround this track. It was kind of very unusual I guess at that time. Yeah. So this uh, actually. Uh, a new record from last year. James Holden is like a dance music producer. Yeah, yeah. His music has this incredible way of kind of, it's always building and falling apart. It kind of seems to really like breathe like a, like as it, it has kind of electronic means and it sounds very electronic, but it also sounds like it's very much alive. And You know, there, there's no, there's no beats like this on my record or whatever, but later on in the song, the way things, melodies are kind of, falling into one another and things are growing and falling apart. Take us briefly through the setup you've got here. What are you okay. using? So it's just, I record everything just straight onto a hard drive. A crappy little condenser microphone that uh, I use to record pretty much everything. There would be a little kind of sampler thing which is currently at the rehearsal studio or whatever that I use to kind of put guitars straight into and put effects on things. And, put keyboards straight into, I'll just plug everything in there and it just goes in the back of the computer. A lot of the times these are just completely the first take that I do things, I'll be just trying things out. Oh, that's, that, you know, that does what I want it to, that sounds exciting and whatever and then I, you know, whereas most people kind of write the song and then they come back and they record it and they make sure oh everything's just perfectly right or whatever. I kind of like the sound that I get when there are mistakes in there and when things go in and out of time with one another and things. The last thing I want my music to sound like is this room. I don't want it to sound like it was made on a computer. I want it to make it sound like it was like it's a whole other world unto itself or whatever. So and a lot of the times that's by kind of Melody Day, where have you gone? by piling kind of sounds on top of one another so that's me singing it four times I guess so those little things it sounds like a flute it's actually this this old synthesizer actually was the first synthesizer sold at Woolworths. I started seven, 670 tracks for this record. I was, just because that's, if you give me free time, that's what I'll do. I'll always be working on music, I'll always be trying out ideas.
but uh, this is what sucks. So uh, this is Brad currently doing some stretches, and that's Andy. Till he got off the plane two weeks ago, I hadn't met him before in my life, and that's Brian, who uh, I've known most of my life, and we played in bands together since we were teenagers. building who you talked to earlier <laughs> came out and talked to us on the break the other day and he's like I like your work ethic you're here every day you get here early in the morning you're here till late at night every single day seven days a week and he was like I like that attack attack <laughs> attack <laughs>